guys, welcome back. I'm Captain Foley, and it's time for another Eagle Moss review. So today we're going to be looking at another TOS ship. Uh, this one is number 63. Again, I got the magazine, which is awesome. I don't always get these, but I love getting them because they do have a lot of interesting facts in them, a lot of them, and they're fantastically well done. Um, so we're going to be looking at the Antares NCC 501 today. Uh, this is a freighter um, or a cargo vessel. Um, launch 23rd century, a crew of 20 personnel and a length of 134 meters. So there you have it. Um, getting right into it, as always, here it says, uh, here's the first page with the typical view of the front and then some information and some close-up shots. A cargo vessel, 23rd century, 134 meters approximately, crew of 20, Destroyed in 2266, the captain was uh, Captain Ramart. Um, and it was, of course, destroyed by Charlie X in the episode Charlie X. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was an aging starship and used mainly to transport for transport and cargo duties. Um, so they did a fantastic CG model of it for the Star Trek uh, TOS Remastered. Um, and this, of course, is based on a animated ship design that Michael Kuda always liked. Um, there's the Enterprise there, pulled up alongside the Antares, which is just a cool shot. Um, it goes on to talk here about the, uh, the Antares crew wearing older uniforms, so I guess they should be wearing Discovery Era uniforms. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's another topic for another day. Um, yeah, because they were wearing older uniforms because it wasn't the front line of Starfleet vessels, apparently. So, anyway, um, going to the next page, you got picture of Charlie X there looking all creepy. And then the, uh, the, the profile view and the dorsal view of this ship uh, with some things listed, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Designing the Aries. Here it is here. Looking very cool. There's, there it is from the animated series. Now the animated series one was missing the front uh, module. Uh, it was a little bit different. Um, and it was NCC 61465. So, but anyway, that was the grain ship from the animated series. And then um, Mike Kuda liked it so much because it reminded him of a ship that uh, would come from the imagination of Matt Jeffries. Uh, so he uh, drew up the plans and uh, added the front module to make it a little more substantial for, uh, for the Ares, a little bit of a different class, um, not just a grain ship. And um, yeah, so now it also made an appearance in one of the remastered episodes, Court Martial. You can see it right there above the Enterprise. Um, <clears throat> And it was also in the Ultimate Computer, of course. Uh, Richard Daystrom's M5 unit destroyed it, destroyed a robot, um, commanded a ship just because it felt like it. Now the book goes on to talk about the animated series somewhat. If you haven't checked out the animated series with Star Trek, what are you doing? Go check it out. It's really worth it. Uh, they talk about a few different episodes in here, uh, so that's pretty cool kind of like the last two seasons of the five-year mission. Um, it wasn't, wasn't originally considered canon, but then they since... I think they've since said the whole thing's canon. They said only one episode was canon originally. That was yesteryear about Spock's childhood. Um, but I think that's been changed now by CBS, and they do consider it canon. So that's good. Um, I do like the fact that there's another two years of lore and history there to look at. So, But... Um, yeah, it talks about its key appearances here in Charlie X and the Ultimate Computer. And, uh, yeah, really cool book. So there's the magazine. Now for the actual ship. Here it is in the packaging. You can see it there. And it's a lot smaller than I anticipated. Like, it's very tiny. Like, you can not even see it in my hands. There it is there. A lot of neat little details on this thing. 
and it does set it does speak TOS. It's got that TOS design language to it, whether you like it or not. I mean, <laughs> it's cool. It's got the little deflector there in the front, and and Tari's written in nice script along the bottom, uh, and then this the little yellow circle that we see on the bottom of the uh, TOS Enterprise, which has been shown to be a probe launcher, not a probe launcher, like a satellite launcher, or um, even, it's been speculated it's the ejection port for the warp core, and uh, Matthew Cushman has gone and illustrated that in his large cutaway of the TOS Enterprise, that that's actually what that is, so. But back here on this, it's on the top and the bottom, so I don't think that's what it would be necessarily. It's got some interesting shapes, and I love the little Antares written on all those sides there. So, little transport cargo ship. It's really neat. It's got the, the spikes on the Bizarre Collectors because it's the, an older design there. But I could swear that NCC 501 was the Saladin, uh, the single engine Saladin class. Could be wrong though. But anyway, interesting little design and very small. This Eagle Moss model is very small. It's got a fair heft to it. Uh, it feels like it's all metal on the top here. The nacelles feel plastic and so does the bottom part, but for its weight, or for its size, it's got a, quite a weight to it. It's not super heavy, but it's heavier than it looks, for sure. And uh, some really interesting hull detailing, some aztec kind of going on there, which is neat. Just wondering how this thing would load and stuff. Like I'm sure all these modules down here are the cargo modules. Maybe up here too, but I'd uh, love to see like a interior schematics of this thing. It's a very interesting ship, very very TOS as I've said. So and it looks like there's uh, escape pods on the bottom there. Those squ squares could possibly be escape pods. So yeah, um, impulse engines visible at the back. Probably a low warp ship, but anyway, so we're going to take a look at it now on the stand as we tend to do, and uh, if you guys are interested in picking up any of these ships, like these TOS ships are awesome. I'm actually still waiting for the USS Horizon, which I haven't got from Eagle Moss. I think it's sold out, um, so once they replenish, hopefully I'll get one, but the TOS ships are awesome. If you guys are interested in picking any up or at least taking a look at their lineup, uh, there's a link in the description below that will take you right to the Eagle Moss site. And there you can, of course, um, check them out. Uh, again, they've got some fantastic stuff. And some of this, like, forgotten history of Star Trek, um, which they did in the rem and they remastered it for the remastered series, um, is just stunning and a, a welcome addition to the special effects for TOS, in my opinion. Um, so, like I said, click the link down below. You can head on over to the Eagle Moss site, check out what they have. Pick yourself up some stuff. Order some stuff. And if you want to save some money at checkout, and who doesn't want to save money, honestly, um, at checkout, you just use the discount code TREKYARDS, all one word, and you'll be able to save yourself some money on your order. And uh, some, some, some ships are exempt. This is not one of them. Um, basically, the XL ships and a few other things might be exempt from the discount code. But most of the Eagle Moss ships are eligible for it. So definitely check that out. And... Um, Let's go take a look at it on the stand over here. So here she is here on the stand. And uh, I've got, got to say again, the stand on this one's fantastic. It fits nice and snug. It's nicely slotted in there very well. Eagle Moss did a great job on this stand. Some of their stands don't hold the ships quite so well. This one's actually pretty fantastic. So kudos to them for that. Um, I should also point out, too, that this is the SS Antares, not USS. Um, but some awesome details on this thing. A small little ship, though. It's so tiny. 
I wish they would make some of these ships in scale with each other, but um, yeah, they don't. So that's fine. But yeah, it fits on this stand beautifully. Um, looks good down on a lower shelf. And then if you get on an eye level shelf, actually, it's got a lot of dimensionality, a lot of shapes going on. So it works well on a eye level shelf as well. Now, if you put it on a higher shelf, pulling at the edge here, it actually looks really cool from a lower shelf, or from a higher on a higher shelf from a lower view as well. It's a lot of interesting shapes going on. So this one displays really well from a bunch of different uh, views. And that's really welcome in my opinion. Uh, some ships just don't display well from certain angles, especially from the side or like an eye level view. But this one holds up, looks pretty cool. So usually I just kind of end the review here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it where I'm going to put this model in my ready room and so you can see that so the final shot will be with uh, something else from Eagle Moss because uh, I think it'd be a nice cool addition to uh, what I have going on so let's cut to that right now and see what I have in mind all right I'm gonna have it over here on my shelf with my K7 station which I have not reviewed yet I still need to do that but it definitely looks good there it's uh, you know coming up to the station, getting ready to dock, and I know it's out of scale. It's way too big, but it's closer to the camera, so it's fine. I might be actually leaving the station. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's going to look perfect there. So, anyway, guys, uh, as always, like the video, subscribe to the channels. Uh, there's the Trek Yards channel and the Captain Foley channel. Lots of cool stuff here. Lots of great videos. So check out other videos as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next review or the next Trek Yards episode. So until later, I'm Captain Foley. Bye-bye.